Uh, welcome to Two Mics. My name is Kelvin Moretti. Uh, happy New Year. We've not had this uh, this is going to be our first episode this year. Today I'm joined in by Meg to discuss IF. That is intermittent fasting. We hope you're going to have a good time, Meg. Karibu sana. Thank you. Introduce yourself. So, my name is Margaret Gatwiri. I am a clinical nutritionist by profession. Um and I work at Medanta Africa. Um and I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, karibu sana. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. We've been planning to do this podcast for the longest time. It's just mm-hmm. that thank you. Uh stars mm-hmm. never really aligned. Yeah. And I think it's a very important um podcast. It's a very important conversation. Yes. Why are people so fat these days? <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? There's so much Okay, uh, maybe fat is a bit of a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> But um why oh. do we have uh, we seem to have um Rising cases uh, of obesity, yes, obesity overweight, and yeah. uh, diabetes. diabetes. Yeah. What's happening? Um, I think the fact that uh, first of all, um, we are eating excess, you know, calories than our body actually needs. Um, someone said for overweight and obese cases, you have an excess of everything, you know, an excess of hormones, calories in, um, and also the quality of food that you are eating is not as a uh, good quality as our great, great grandparents used to eat. Like, for example, the potassium uh, that's f- present in the bananas we eat nowadays is not uh, the way it was Kitambo. Oh, really? Yeah. And potassium also, must change. Yeah, because again uh, of the soil quality, okay. uh-huh. increased population is and all that. Is it in terms that. of quantity or in terms of... Uh, because I thought potassium is just K. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, in terms uh-huh. of the quantity. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah mm-hmm. it's very minimal. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, if in the past one would uh, get say for example two units of potassium in one banana mm-hmm. today you'd need two bananas to get the same oh. amount of potassium okay. for example mm. and that um, increases your energy uh, intake when you're eating yeah. anything that oh. you eat yeah some people yeah <laughs> so i get it so what you're saying is that for the same uh, for the same nutritional quantity Uh, that you, your body needs you need a bigger quantity of calories to yeah. get the same amount yeah exactly okay interesting yeah and some people think um you know of course there are, there are some foods out here that are considered healthy and so people think if i eat healthy uh that doesn't really matter the quantities i'm eating but anything you put into your mouth even if it's healthy gives you calories gives you energy in form of calories yeah um yeah so c- calories that's what we call uh, calories energy in physics we learned it's not uh destroyed but transformed from one form to the other so in nutrition when we eat food we are consuming energy in form of calories. Ah, yeah. so so it's an issue of people are generally overeating. Well, um there's that of course, but that doesn't apply to everyone. Um and also the issue of uh the kind of bacteria that are present in our gut have everything to do with how we consume energy. No, yeah. Okay. Um nowadays what we are consuming uh most people are taking antibiotics unnecessarily and that really kills even the good bacteria and it takes around you know six months for long for you to restore the good bacteria the, the killed bacteria yeah. okay yeah. actually that's going to be a very interesting podcast for the future for the bacteria mm-hmm. um i know you you're your business woman in the kombucha industry yeah and i think that that's a whole different the gut okay. is, a, the gut is an incredible health. different yeah. topic yeah but today i wanted us to look at um mm-hmm. Something I noticed, uh, 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 there's a trend that has been happening. Mm-hmm. I know they show all these trends in mm-hmm. uh, nutrition, mm-hmm. uh, the, the latest one. Yeah. But now um, there's one that I looked at and I think um, it, it picked my interest because I was talking to my guy in the gym mm-hmm. and I was telling him how I want by April mm-hmm. to have toned my body properly because yeah. that's when I'm turning 30. Yeah. I'm very scared for, <laughs> <laughs> for the third yeah. um, So he told me, if you want to be able to get there, mm-hmm. and this incredibly properly bulked and chilled guy mm-hmm. he's, he's telling me how um what really helped him mm-hmm. was intermittent fasting okay and um how he he 
she she's been able to employ in such a way that uh, it balances out she's uh, she used to be a bit bulkier mm-hmm. so he had to reduce that extra weight mm-hmm. uh, and he was able to get to the level where he got yeah. through intermittent fasting so I want to ask talk about it so to the layman what mm-hmm. is intermittent fasting intermittent fasting yeah so basically intermittent fasting um is an eating plan that involves alternating eating and fasting yeah uh so we have different uh you know hours of fasting and eating so the longer you fast um the signif the, you know the more significant the results will be so you have 16 hours of fasting and 8 hours of eating and there are people who also fast 24 hours so that when you fast 24 hours that means that you're eating once a day i don't know you if you've heard of this you know omad people talk about yeah. oh i do omad yeah, i yeah. do too mad <laughs> yeah so oh. Yeah, so it's basically um you know switching between eating and fasting. Okay. And when you mean fasting, it doesn't mean um during your 16 hours of fasting you bite an apple and say oh it's I, I haven't you know I'm I'm fasting but even that one bite of an apple breaks your fasting. Your fast. Uh your fast yeah. Actually mm-hmm. yeah, because he was he was he was very categorical about um the the idea is to have zero calories inside your body like even a nut apparently anything mm-hmm. that will cause your insulin mm-hmm. to to go up yeah um will be able to break your fast so maybe you, can you explain to us the significance of um of of insulin or even better what mm-hmm. happens to mm-hmm. your body when you take food and also when you when you when you're fasting mm-hmm. um yeah so before i answer that um it's also nice to mention Kitambo and even for me when I was in campus I didn't used to uh, before I knew I'd get into this industry of nutrition and clinical and everything I didn't used to have breakfast you know so I'd fast and I'd be fine with that so I think now it has a label to eat and yes. people do intermittent <laughs> fasting yeah, yeah. Mm. um so every time that you eat every time you put anything in your mouth there's a hormone called insulin that is produced by your pancreas um you know that goes into the blood and the work of that insulin is to remove sugar from the blood and take it into your cell so that it gives you energy to do work yeah um and why do you need energy we usually expend energy through three ways when we are at rest we call it basal metabolic rate um your body is burning calories just to keep you alive you know you're pumping blood you're thinking you're actively listening yeah. like now <laughs> and that needs mm-hmm. energy okay uh, and also when you're digesting the food that you're eating uh, you are also using or burning calories to digest and absorb it so like proteins and fiber uh, you burn most calories digesting protein and fiber that's why it's important every time you eat make sure you have protein and fiber every time and when you're also doing activity for example when you decide to use the stairs instead of using a lift you are increasing your energy expenditure yeah so insulin drives uh sugar into the cell to give you energy to do all that work yeah. yeah and insulin is not and that's why insulin and diabetes go hand in hand because um if insulin doesn't do its work of removing sugar from the blood into your cell you end up having a lot of sugar okay. yeah in the blood okay. um and yeah so uh yeah insulin is not just for uh for for removing the sugar into the cell it's also responsible for fat storage so the more insulin you have in your blood the more likely you will uh, accumulate fat I, and actually that's very interesting because um mm-hmm. i i uh they there is a they i'm trying to remember they they <clears throat> there is this analogy i think we had discussed it before the podcast began about the fridge essentially when you eat food you're storing it in inside like your fridge which is the body 
Uh, so I don't know. So I, mine kind of ex- mind uh, explain to us that because people don't realize that every food that you take has sh- sugar. It's not just coming from sukari yeah. or sugar, <laughs> little yeah. sugar yeah. or sugary stuff. Yeah. But even your gali, even your your meat mm-hmm. has a, a glycogenic. What is it called? Glycogen. Yeah. The, 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 there's like like a, like something index. Mm-hmm. The, the index that the quantity of glycemic index. Yeah, the, it has mm-hmm. a glycemic index. Yeah. That essentially shows how, just how much mm-hmm. sugar. Uh, yeah. spike it causes on yeah. the body um so there are different uh each every food that you eat will affect or impact your sugar level differently and when sugar level is impacted so is insulin as well so remember when you eat when ins- sugar goes into the blood so does insulin yeah. um so if your body is used to uh you know having a lot of sugar or a spike of blood sugar then you end up having too much insulin as well when you have too much insulin in the blood um your brain becomes tolerant to it you know we call that insulin resistance it's like for example i don't know if in your primary school mkom na chapwa sana if your beating gets to a point you don't even feel any pain because yeah. you you're tolerant yeah, yeah, yeah. you used mm. to you used to you know that pain so the brain becomes tolerant to it and then that Uh, brings insulin resistance and that's like the first step of diabetes type 2 oh. yeah so diabetes doesn't just happen overnight mm. and when you have insulin resistance you uh losing weight is hard for you mm. because when insulin is present in the blood it shuts down other hormones that are supposed to be burning fat yeah so uh when every time you eat an excess of calories an excess of energies yeah the body stores that excess if you eat excess carbs excess protein the body stores um that excess as glycogen in the liver yeah um and so uh when every time you need uh fuel you know so for example you want to run, run mm. for 30 or minutes beat up your child. Uh, mm. or no <laughs> <laughs> or do oh. some moderate intensity intensity workout um the glycogen will be the quick source of energy yeah. yeah so we call glycogen as um as an energy boost yeah and that's the form of fuel that the body uses fast before tapping into the fat um so when now the body has depleted glycogen stores during your 30 minutes of maybe moderate uh, walking or whatever then now after that depletion now that's when the body goes and taps into the fat So if in any case you'll have eaten maybe an orange or a fruit uh after your depletion then the body won't tap into the fat to fuel ah. you it's going to use the the sugar the energy that oh, you've given it okay. yeah so that's a, that's why it's very important to make sure that um you in this period that you're fasting you are essentially making sure that um <coughs> essentially make, excuse me essentially making sure that you, you are utilizing whatever is stored yeah because actually um the analogy or the fridge analogy mm-hmm. was you, you 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 when when you eat x amount of calories you put them in a fridge has two compartments it has a freezer and has a fridge so in the fridge it, it's very accessible yeah very easy tra- transactionally accessing and storing um and then uh, assume now the freezer has a an infinite amount of storage yeah. so the the, the 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 fridge has an unlimited amount of storage so when the glycogen amount is co- completed in the fridge section yeah. it is pushed to the freezer which is which you can store absolutely everywhere it's a fat in your stomach it's a fat yeah. in, your, in your face in your face <laughs> <laughs> in your face <laughs> yeah. you know, um mm. and, and, and so Essentially what happens is um when when you're fasting so the analogy now for fasting becomes that when you're fasting and especially if you're fasting and you're working out is that you consume the food in the fridge very quickly the glycogen and then now the body is left stranded yeah uh, uh, what do we do mm-hmm. it now goes to the Tuck freezer into, yeah exactly the freezer. yeah and and so um So and in the same goes. I don't know how that uh, sounds looks like now like what's the science behind it? Um and, and also maybe the oh, explain a bit now the science behind now when you're fasting with yeah in the background of that analogy. Um so when you are fasting 
it means that you are not um you you're, you're not having you're not giving your blood sugar yeah and different foods spike uh sugar differently so carbohydrates spike sugar the most followed by protein and then fats are the least fats have the least impact on your sugar levels that's why if you feel like snacking anything it's better snacking on plant based fats instead of really yeah instead of uh even a fruit if you, you don't want to break that these little ones that make people fat <laughs> yeah so uh, so uh-huh. what what and also maybe uh the bad fat maybe because it's an inflammatory food uh but plant healthy fats plant based fats will not um will not spike your insulin levels at all will have the minimal you know um effect on your sugar levels and insulin as well and so actually eating plant based fats or you know snacking on them uh, might usually have uh, will increase your insulin sensitivity yeah uh, but also it's careful remember we talked about anything as much as it's healthy it will still give you energy in form of calories and fats have the highest amount of like when 1 gram of carbs and protein gives you 4 calories 1 gram of fat gives you 9 calories so as much as it uh, doesn't have an effect on your insulin don't overdo it again don't overindulge yeah um yeah so when you fast it means uh your sugar levels are low and so is your insulin level yeah um and when your insulin level is low remember we said as long as you have insulin present in the blood you it's it's in, it's very difficult for you to burn fat even if you're exercising why because present presence of insulin in the blood shuts down other hormones that are responsible for fat burning oh. like glucagon for example okay. okay um so for you to use glycogen um glucagon hormone has to increase and glucagon is what now converts the glycogen into sugar and fuels you when you're not eating and so um when insulin is low in the blood then other fat burning hormones like growth hormones ah, increase now okay and then when those hormones are high then you, you you will be able to tap into your fat for that fat to fuel you ah, yeah that's very interesting yeah so mm. but fats remember we have different these essential because you also need good fats yeah. and you need mm-hmm. fat in the body as well mm. to survive and Definitely. yeah to, to, to make things. hormones mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. all that um and so there's essential fat and the storage fat so the storage fat is now what you want to tap into it and the storage fat is usually the subcutaneous fat underneath you know the whole skin mm-hmm. you know face and everything and the visceral fat which is the most dangerous the, yeah. and the most stubborn kind yeah, of fat the stomach one yeah yeah, mm. yeah so now when your insulin is low so therefore you're able to tap into those the kinds fats. of fat yeah but these essential fats that that are in the liver in your uh, b- muscle in the heart in the digestive systems those are there to you keep your body functioning well It's very interesting because now I think so essentially what you're saying is if you if if you if you are fasting in this period of uh, in, in this window of fasting essentially what you're doing and and uh, and by making sure that you've not eaten anything that period is making sure that your insulin level is is, is low, low yeah. and your glucagon level is high, high so that now you can go hunting yeah the glucagon can go hunting for fats in all these different places yeah exactly oh, that is very very interesting um, yeah so um i wanted also to 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 now a bit more now breaking it breaking it down a bit uh the 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 intermittent fasting so um would you kind uh, would you kind of you know break it down for us how one can be able to do it i think the most common one is a 16 8 uh, where we have a period of 8 hours of eating and 16 hours of fasting yeah, maybe maybe breaking break it down for us in a way that someone can be able to do it and how um, how effective it mm. can be mm. um, yeah so um first of uh, so first of all um if you're an individual who you know eats three meals a day and snacks in between breakfast and lunch and lunch and dinner and before going to bed you have a bedtime snack so maybe the first uh kind of fasting for you because it doesn't make sense if you're doing that now you say or oh, now do 24 that's not you know good um so a first step would be getting rid of the snacks in between the meals someone who said uh, small frequent meals throughout the day is good that's 
that's the best formula for weight gain because your insulin is high throughout the entire day uh-huh. you're not giving your body a break off of insulin uh, it's high th- and when it's high throughout the entire day chronically that leads to insulin resistance and over time pre-diabetes and in between this time of course you 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 have you gain weight and it's difficult for you to lose the weight and then pre-diabetes and then diabetes uh, and alzheimer's now it's the third type of diabetes um yeah so the first step would be removing the snacks or if you feel like you really uh, must snack on something snack on a plant-based fat maybe like a handful of or half a handful of um you know nuts you know walnuts um almonds and all that yeah so that would be a practical first step um so the other one the most common one um and i've been doing this for the longest time is you know uh, skipping breakfast and that doesn't have to work for everyone yeah. yeah um so uh you can have uh so if you're having two meals a day um then your fasting period um that's probably like um 12 plus 6 that's 18 18 18 mm. 16 to 18 hours of fasting uh, yeah good. that's mm. hours of fasting and then now you can eat two meals a day so when you're doing 24 hours of fasting that's when now you are having one meal a day they call omad yeah mm. 24 24 24 hours and 20 mm. hours of fasting there's something so that's a mm. <laughs> anyway. mm-hmm. yeah so the of course the longer that you're fasting the better it is you know for your for, for you, you know, for, for, your, for your goals yeah for yeah. your goals mm-hmm. um so they say uh, there's what we call autophagy as well so autophagy is whereby um the body sort of eats itself yeah because you're not giving it you know food um and 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 that's it that ends up healing the body in a way uh because again all these um overweight and obesity cases and chronic diseases you're having is because of inflammation of the body and so that helps to heal the inflammation diseases like um rheumatoid arthritis are because of inflammation of the body and such um so when you fast for more than two days you know one two day two days or three days that's when now autophagy really increases and it's more significant and glucagon is the hormone again that initiates that process of autophagy which also helps to uh destroy you know damaged cells and redundant cells as well yeah so fasting having a lifestyle of fasting here and there it's it's a good idea yeah and yeah so so i saw something somewhere um uh, there there is a research that was done uh on uh, a group of people and uh, in it was it was the 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 idea of the research was to advise the american government on nutrition and rationing uh for the americans the american soldiers in the world war second world war so a group of people were given uh, you know limited calories and uh i think uh so they wanted to see if you give people less calories um and uh if if it it, it you know what, what effect it has on the body and i think i don't know if they, I'm, i can't remember very clearly but I, the control for that would be uh, you know having someone uh, deprived of of calories altogether for a period and then you feed them so th- th- this is a there is a different uh, experiment that was done and and it showed Now these people who were given limited calories they bo- they became weak they became delirious they became uh, th- their muscles started tearing they were given calories mm-hmm. but limited, but limited calories yeah. but then the people who were uh, were deprived of calories and then allowed like a proper meal even if it's one or one in two days their bodies essentially became better and like even uh, they were, not, they were uh, someone would have expected they would be del- delirious but you know the, their concentrations becomes higher um and and so so what's what's the science behind the fact that uh, one person as you'd ex- intuitively you'd expect at least you mekula some food this person has taken some food and so uh, they should have the energy to go around but you realize a person who's 
avoided food for a day or two and then you give them uh, uh, even that during that period of fasting they seem to have more energy than this other person what's the science behind that mm. yeah so um when you're fasting um you your body is being fueled you know mostly by ketone bodies you know from the fats and um even science shows that when your brain again is also being filled by ketones you know there's more clarity um and yeah so and uh, again when you're fasting you know your body is healing itself as mm-hmm. as well so like you're not jump starting um the pancreas you know even when you have a bite of something now the pancreas you know wakes up um and also the enzyme the enzyme that are supposed to uh, digest the food as well and when you restrict uh that if you have like a very restricted diet uh that's like a form of stress again that you having on your body um and hormones have a lot to do with our overall health and weight gain and all that um so for example when now your body is now under that psycho- um physiological stress cortisol hormone increases and when that's like a stress hormone you know when that cortisol hormone increases um then it 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 goes to uh release you know sugars for them to go to the blood and then insulin again increases it's like a vicious cycle for example but when you when you're fasting all together you know your body heals especially off of inflammation um and you see how inflammation affects leptin a hormone that is also very crucial for uh, metabolism and appetite and uh, fat storage um yeah Okay. So so essentially the, because uh w- one of the things that they observed also was that um you in, when you're fasting that uh, and even as you get your cust- accustomed to it you realize that y- you might feel a bit weak. You realize that you're feeling a bit uh, uh, uh you know angry <laughs> but with time you get used to it and even sometimes you forget that you're hungry. And I think one of the takeaways from that and also um was that hunger sometimes is usually a mindset. Yeah. Or even much better uh put, yeah. it's it's a biological uh requirement that is clocked by us. Yeah. Because um so th- th- there's this hormone, maybe you'll explain to us what the name of the hormone is, is that they noticed that even when you're fasting They would, uh, so the cycle of uh, so there's usually like a cycle of this hormone that makes you feel hungry. And then if you don't pay attention to it it goes do lo and you even forget that you are hungry. Sometimes when I'm working and maybe I'm so busy and I, I need to take lunch, I I I I will feel hungry. Yeah. And then I'll forget to like if uh, that when that window period has passed, you forget about it and you 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 can even take much much longer without eating food because it is apparently a mindset it's a hunger is usually hormone controlled yeah. and you can be able to modulate for that yeah. can maybe explain a bit about that yeah so as you're saying uh like sometimes in our brains we condition maybe watching with eating or so that when you when you're just watching you feel like Ah, I need to go eat. So it's like, you know, yeah, psychology, yeah, of eating. Uh but there are two main hormones that usually regulate um, you know, eating and satiety. We call them the hunger and satiety hormone. So the satiety hormone is called leptin and the hunger hormone is called ghrelin. So um leptin is what tells your brain we are full and we have energy stores so we let's stop eating or we don't have to eat really per se and so this leptin hormone is produced by your fat cells um so uh, the fat cells produce a leptin and now they tell they signal your brain differently so they can either signal your brain to increase metabolism and uh, reduce appetite when it's working well when it's when your brain is sensitive to it but when your brain is not sensitive to it it does the opposite tells your brain let's increase appetite and reduce metabolism um and so one would think you know overweight and obese people are fat so they have more fat cells so then why are they still 
you know, fat. Down yeah. your mm. So you can the same way we become insulin resistance is the same way you can also get leptin resistance as well. So when you have too many fat cells, you have a lot of leptin hormone that the brain is resistant to its function. So when you eat, uh, the, the the brain doesn't know you're full, so you keep eating even when you're full. Yeah. Um and so when your leptin is working properly and also this is why sometimes it's hard it's easy to lose the weight but it's hard to keep it off because when you lose the fat you lose your leptin hormone reduces and then over time uh, now you when the leptin hormone is low so you increase your appetite and reduce your metabolism so again there are ways you can see a nutritionist near you to guide you on ways to uh you know keep your leptin hormone um good and being sensitive to your brain so when you're hungry again we have uh ghrelin hormone and that hormone is produced by your stomach cells and it's what tells your brain um you know morati we are hungry let's go and eat yeah and so when you know how to trick the ghrelin hormone then it can be helpful again as you say it's you know psychology effect um and eating fiber every time you eating it is it's soluble fiber especially uh soluble fiber dissolves in water so when it dissolves in water it expands in your stomach and makes your stomach full so remember that hormone so is produced like, uh, like um you know oats um oh, okay Uh, apples as well mm-hmm. uh beans and remember when you eat that soluble fiber it won't work without water because it dissolves in water mm-hmm. and water is what makes it expand and fill you up mm-hmm. yeah so so uh so essentially um the 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 hunger hormone came up also very uh, prominently in the research of the in Philadelphia um of these guys because they noticed that it it it's so mapped with our eating patterns like the body is just pre- uh, anticipating yeah. food mm. anticipating food so if you can um if you can be able to work in a way such that you are able to to ignore it it's in a changa ujinga yeah. like with, with time yeah and it doesn't even know when to could go up and yeah. and one of the things also that people re- don't realize also is that um w- w- there's a difference between n- n- starving mm-hmm. and hungry yeah. starving so starving essentially is is when uh, maybe there's a difference between those two because uh so- some people might confuse the two of them yeah because starving means essentially you're completely yeah de- deprived yeah mm. yeah so you know hunger is um yeah your brain tells you let's eat because we it's our time. stomach is empty mm. and it's time to mm. eat again mm. um and someone said you can't control how you feel but sometimes you can ignore what you feel um and when you starve is uh when you're completely you're hungry and you um you don't you don't eat anything when you're hungry and um therefore the body has no choice but to tap into the fats to fuel you mm-hmm. and uh prolonged starving again which is also not mm-hmm. good uh you know can uh deplete your fat stores and when the fat stores are depleted then the body goes into protein and uses protein to fuel you and now here is where you hear of muscle wasting mm-hmm especially in hospitals um yeah someone is muscle wasted because they their their body has now depleted fat stores and now it's using protein stores ah, mm. okay. so you don't want to get that you especially get if you're that. working out yeah. and doing strength uh, training strength, strength mm. training okay like mm. some of us mm. uh, i don't know who uh, kevin some of us mm. like namoreti but not brag but yeah <laughs> some of us do strength training <laughs> but yeah. anyway so um maybe another question that also mm. i think might be very important is um when it comes to someone who wants to do if uh what kind of food uh would you tell them to take when they are breaking the fast how 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 is a plate supposed to do, do you eat a lot do you eat kidogo or what's the composition of what you're eating because like now carbs also are really frowned upon nowadays it's like a buzzword amongst the the, the nutrition enthusiasts yeah so um 
again there are most people who do IF and don't see any results it's because um they fast yes but during their window of eating now they eat every <laughs> all the calories they make and up. even more <laughs> they make yeah. up for the, for the last time yeah mm. and even more mm. than um they, they would have would, eaten when they, they were mm. not fasting okay. yeah mm. so you're hungry it's like you eat breakfast and lunch and dinner all at the same time <laughs> and that's not good yeah. really mm. um yeah so that you're shocking your body and that can also create a form of stress in your body and your pancreas as well um so you want to break your fast in a way that is healthy and uh eat balanced and vitamins and you know food that will give you vitamins you know minerals nutrients and all that because if your cell is not um is not absorbing what you're eating well you're eating yes but if it's not absorbing then it won't really help you because remember what we want to achieve is not just to lose or off the fat but it we want to also be healthy overall you know when we deprive ourselves of certain vitamins and we've been fasting all along then that's not a good thing we can end up having acute diseases um and even chronic sometimes yeah so when you say you want to when you fasting during your fasting period of course uh hydrate you know you drink your water take some green teas especially uh because your body is healing um and you want to take anti-inflammatory foods you know like green teas fruits but vegetables. zero calories doing the uh, um, yeah yeah but zero fast. calories yeah so for example if you're fast you can take green tea don't put honey um honey has sugar mm. yeah or don't even put sugar uh, or don't put sugar or nothing yeah we have different types of sugar that impacts your sugar levels differently in the blood but all together they will still break your fast so do coffee without uh sugar as well and i mean hydrate water too and then now when you're breaking off you can start maybe with a fruit you know and then uh the meals that you will eat uh your plate and sure half of it is vegetables and the well, a quarter is protein and the other quarter is carbs and if you feel like doing uh maybe two snacks you can you can throw in um plant based fats in there yeah if it's an egg you can also consume an egg actually an egg uh helps to improve your insulin sensitivity but when it is eaten whole not when it is egg white only because that fat the same way in the plant based fats helps to buffer insulin yeah so yeah okay mm-hmm. so so and uh, talking about the carbohydrates the um, the there is a lot of uh, bad press around uh, this for the, I'm trying to remember the name the wheats What are they, they, what is it called? Um, gluten. What, gluten. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, well, maybe kind of mm. explain to us why they, they, there is so much bad press <laughs> around around, glu- around gluten. gluten and yeah. chapos and and, yeah. and mandazis. So I'm usually a fan of everything that God created for the human race is good for consumption, yeah. Mm, except so maybe you won't find me eating, uh, doing except keto weed. or whatever, except we do. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, uh, but of course, again, we have to admit that the wheat uh, that was being used by our great grandparents is not the same that we're using now. Um, and so, gluten has been shown to cause inflammation. Inflammation is whereby um uh, your your immune system working against you instead of working for you to protect you and so there are foods that can actually cause inflammation of the body yeah and some of those foods include gluten um include um you know all the refined carbohydrates we have here uh fried uh deep fried foods especially if they've been used if they've been fried with recycled oil you know uh processed meat um you know sweetened beverages sodas and all that so again also breaking your fast with these foods will not really is not a you. good idea mm-hmm. yeah and so gluten is found to be one of those foods that increase inflammation of the body Yeah, but you shouldn't should we completely if someone is on a fitness journey of losing their tummy is it a good idea to avoid gluten 
to avoid gluten. Especially uh, <laughs> the simple carbohydrates. Mm. The, I'm talking about the overprocessed gluten yeah. from the chapels and all that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a good idea, yes. Uh, so, carbohydrates, we have uh, simple and complex carbohydrates. Um, so, you're better off uh, when you eat, every time you eat a carbohydrate, always go for an, the alternative of the whole, the complex one. You know, avoid the simple carbs, yeah. Um, and earlier on, we examples. talked about, yeah, so examples like uh, whole bread instead of white bread. I know there's brown bread, but uh, I'm not sure it's that's Nirangi good. Too, mepaka, yeah. Mm. And mm. we have um, whole chapati instead of white chapati. We have brown rice instead of white rice. And some people also uh, substitute rice for quinoa as well. And quinoa is good because it has high protein and fiber as well. Oats again amazing sources of fiber too plant-based fats also give you good fiber as well um and uh plant-based carbohydrate like sources like pumpkins sweet potatoes you know all that yeah so that will help you again remember we said when your body burns more calories digesting fiber and fiber also feeds your good gut bacteria that ensure you have a diverse of bacteria that uh, prevent you from consuming or extracting a lot of energy from what you're eating. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, so uh, as, as we finalize, actually, um, this is a very interesting uh, episode um, because I've been honestly very concerned about the eating patterns of Kenyans and uh, how how people lucy from each other will think it's fine just to drink cucumber water and 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 wash it down with a mandazi um like we are not very conscious about the things that we are putting in our into our mouths and i feel like it's very very important that we watch i feel like the human human beings are some of the animals that eat the most mm. <laughs> because a, a lion will just lie there until it's time to eat but human beings like as and until the like it's necessary to eat but then human beings just eat because it's time to eat and 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 i feel like that's that's actually that's i thought it was very important that we have this episode so uh one of the things that maybe we can talk about as we even finalize what is the science of eating slowly as opposed to eating quickly because i saw that if you're also on a journey of of um of you know cutting some of that weight is try eating slowly yeah um so when you eat slowly i mean when first of all eating slowly must start with chewing slowly yeah, yeah? so chewing slowly helps to break down food into very fine you know small particles and digestion of carbs should be in the mouth and then protein in the stomach because of the acid but most times uh, we, we swallow food before it before the carbs is digested in the <laughs> mouth <laughs> mm. and so when we chew quickly and even sometimes swallow the food as it is whole when you swallow that can really slow down your digestion uh, significantly um so chewing thar- so it's not essentially chewing slowly because you can chew slowly but not thoroughly so you chew slowly and thoroughly at the same time so that uh, you help uh, you help your body, your body to digest do, food do have yeah. an easier time yeah help yeah. your body yeah. and, and, and this is something also that we're saying that um, uh, there was a nutritionist I was uh, in the of course of the research of this thing she was saying that um, your body takes uh, about is it 10 or 20 minutes mm-hmm uh, before communicating to your oh, head yeah. that you're full. Yeah. So if you eat too quickly, exactly, you might end up eating too much food. Yeah. More than than more than you needed. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember we talked about leptin hormone. That's the hormone that tells your brain, you know, Moretti, we are full, so let's stop eating. So that hormone uh, takes like 20 minutes for that communication to happen, and so. Again, as you're saying, yeah, that's correct. And so usually encourage people, you know, when you feel like you're 80% full and that aspect of chewing also helps um, the hormones and the brain to communicate well. So when you're 80% full, you know, just stop eating. Yeah. Because, and when you feel like going to add more food, 
just wait for 20 minutes and then you'll make that decision after 20 minutes because uh, if you're 80% now, after 20 minutes, you'll be 100% full. If you're 100% now, after 20 minutes, you'll be uncomfortably full. And then you add some water and then you go sleep and then it's just a chaotic <laughs> night. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, and then also there's also something I saw, uh, a trick that also if you're trying to reduce your 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 calorific intake you could try eating smaller plates mm. yeah that 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 helps um but also it's key for you to maybe visit a nutritionist to help you um to help you Design. consume mm-hmm. the daily calories that your body actually needs because we need different calories because you have different metabolism um you know different uh, basal meta when we are stressed and all that um yeah and based on your height and it, mostly your height so it's important for you to see one first uh so basically a smaller plate helps you um if you feel full from the brain you know no, yeah you're yeah. feeling the brain when yeah. you use a big plate even if it's much food it might not seem like you're going to really you know gain satiety yeah so not too small just a medium plate and use that medium the the plate model we talked about half vegetables and then that helps you most people think it's the carbs that make them full but that's not true trafikrugali sembe ndo tanishibisha it's the the veg the fiber so the, the luyas light was fiber hmm. yeah the luyas yeah. <laughs> light was it's, yeah. it's, it's a fiber it's a fiber so for hmm. example if your plate has um carbs uh, ugali and beef only uh, especially if it's the refined ugali digestion will be quick because there's no fiber your stomach will be emptied quickly and then sugar will spike in the blood quickly insulin as well and then you feel because your stomach is emptied could remember it's talked about ghrelin hormone so you feel you want to add some more food and then oh. you go add more food so mm. at the end of the day you feel hungry quickly mm. and you've eaten a lot, a of, lot of calories, calories. so oh. if you'd have added vegetables or fiber there that fiber would have prevented that spike of blood sugar and insulin and it have kept you full for longer and even full for you not to add more of the carbs of the demonized yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, demonized mm. the gluten uh, anyway, and then so finally as we finish um how normally how long would one expect to see results from uh, the IF from the intermittent fasting I think that's a everyone everyone who's listening might be like, mm-hmm. yeah I want to know <laughs> how fast can I d- get that Serious beach body thoughts. yeah mm. so anything uh from six weeks and more uh but also remember consistency with everything literally is key so it was a break uh, weekend <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm mm, saying mm. like consist- I mean there are people who do omad three days a week and two mad and that's fine because even when you when you eating three meals a day without fast without snacking that's also a form of fast when you're doing too mad again yeah so just you can play around with that and so the, the idea is to train your body to um to quickly when you we say when you know you're you are metabolically healthy is when you're able to switch quickly to using fats yeah so the idea is to just train your body to to you know just yeah, like yeah. that so mm. uh, when i mean consistency i don't mean like every day do one mm. meal no 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 <laughs> yeah mm. just that when you're fasting again you know don't uh, you know uh, take uh, your break goals. the fast mm. and then mm. say you're fasting and you're not really fasting okay. yeah so that's the idea just training your brain mm. uh, and your hormones to always behave as you want them to behave oh. yeah okay mm. so the last question so who do you think should do IF? Yeah. Who does it work for? Yeah, so there's no one size fits all in nutrition. Um and that's why I mean there's Google but also there are nutritionists out here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, so there's no Google and then you think yeah, you're now an expert. Yeah, mm. it doesn't uh, nutritionists will help you journey through what's what works best for your overall health. Um and so IF you know pregnant and lactating women shouldn't do IF because of the demand of energy they need uh, and nutrients as well um it, 
people 18 years and below again who are growing up they need calories to catch up you know because they are growing up they need even more calories than grown up people mm. yeah because they are growing up uh people who have kidney issues or any other medical condition uh because they need nutrients yeah, yeah to, to continuously yeah, replenish to help that, them uh, yeah okay. people who are admitted in the hospital their demands for nutrition are high so they really you don't want to you know um take your body through that um ordeal um yeah if you have a medical issue um if yeah you're old mm, old uh, as well if you're young <laughs> uh-huh. okay. if you're growing up mm-hmm. if you're breastfeeding um yeah okay mm-hmm. I, but i also heard that uh i if has helped some people with type 2 diabetes well Um I don't know how that is <laughs> but I've, I've seen some testimonies of people yeah. who are saying they've had, they've reduced their medical uh, load so uh, medicinal load sorry yeah so Be- because I think of modulating with the insulin or something I don't know um well it- I think that's research that's mm, also ongoing. underway honestly okay. because um uh, also pe- patients who are diabetic especially type 1 diabetic should yeah, do shouldn't IF do IF at IF, all yeah. mm. um because what happens if you're diabetic it means that your body your body is not sensitive to like it's not sensitive to insulin it's not using insulin properly so um yes you have sugar um in the blood but it doesn't know that it's not using that it's using fuel from fats so there's what we call diabetic to acidosis dka that's actually fatal and um and it mostly might happen to people with diabetes type 1 but also with type 2 because so in hospitals patients with type 2 are given insulin <laughs> more insulin so for me again it also doesn't make sense why someone is insulin resistant and you're pumping more insulin <laughs> so that's why i'm saying mm. this again more research cuz who am i to say that doctors all over kenya who uh, are using the world, yeah mm-hmm. of the world who are using that so Yeah. So for at the moment people who are diabetic um again consult the doctor um and the nutritionist as well that you're seeing so that you're eating a well balanced diet and reducing yes you you're eating the carbs but you not over indulging because that over indulging is bad uh, someone who's not using insulin well can either be hyperglycemic or hypo and when they're hypo maybe because of not eating they can easily it's actually more dangerous being hyper than being hyper because when you're hyper you can easily and quickly die mm, because you remember we said you need energy for when you're resting for your body to keep you alive so if you don't have energy at all to be alive you like, die it means death yeah <laughs> okay. mm. so thank you so much for coming to our podcast today and i think um you have given us some very good i, w- I want to say framework Uh, but i think as you mentioned the details of each person uh, varies you know every person will have to you know consult a, a, a nutritionist to get a program or to have the questions answered tailored to their situation so where can someone find you okay um yeah so i'm a consultant at medanta africa so it's opposite safari common way yakiwe Monday, Wednesday, Friday you'll find me there but you can always hit me up um my line is 0711 551111 and we can plan and see how we a journey together yeah because and it's a journey social media where do we find you uh instagram mm-hmm. as meg your nutrition therapist Me, uh, that is at meg your, your nutrition <laughs> no therapist okay mm. sawa sawa thank you mm. so much manze i really appreciate and i hope you guys who are listening are going to put into practice some of these things you've had stop eating too much and eat <laughs> properly eat good food it's yeah. it, it's important that you take care of your your your, your body because you you are stuck with it for the rest of your life so you might as well have a good ride with it yeah uh, anyway thank you so much uh till next time bye thank you for having me mm. okay kwaherini mm.